All right, we're back. It's a new evening, and I've done a little bit of gardening on the side, just because in real time it goes. So I've been just occasionally checking in on it and having to had to run back and do some gardening first. Much like in real life. Okay, good. I don't need any medicinal herbs right now. But I do need to try my hand at this story again. This person must be dreaming too. It would appear that way, yes. Can't say I'm very excited to go back there. That dream world sort of creeps me out. Perhaps you should spend less time complaining and more time getting on with the mission. Yeah, yeah. How long have I been in this fresh hell? We've been through this one before. Box prison, tucks beneath its stairway. Some infinite castle, yes. So. So this is the... Now I'm back to where I remember now. So, I force my eyes open and see water pooling around my ankles, lapping at my shins. There's so much of it. Yes, and more comes each moment we delay. If we do not make good use of our escape, we shall all drown in this castle. We know you are weak, but you are our only hope to survive this place. Time, that long-forgotten friend, made itself known again. I nodded my head and swore to save my rescuers, no matter the cost. The castle catacombs are a maze, twisting upon themselves like the endless entrails of a giant. I have no choice but to proceed north. At the end of the corridor, a row of twenty gorgeous canopied beds resting atop a carpet of velvet. All are covered in a thick layer of dust and cobwebs. Searching for the door to the next room, I come upon a shapeless mass of gray matter. It has been shoved against the side of the wall, and despite my fever, I think I see the outlines of a door just beyond. When I reach out a finger and touch a piece of the mass, it turns to dust and drifts away on the wind. Realization slowly dawns, and I fall to my knees and weep. Corpses, I face a mountain of charred and crumbling corpses. So things turning to dust and drifting away, that might be important. I look from it to the beds and back again until the horror dawns full upon me. Someone has piled these bodies into a tower and set them ablaze. Whether they were alive or dead, I do not know, and sanity will not permit me to consider the proposition further. If I make a sound, whether scream or laughter, I cannot be certain. Then my mind grants me merciful blackness, and I find myself opening the door and leaving that most terrible of rooms. Let's proceed east. Uh, proceed north. Uh, let's try west this time. At the end of the path, a row of heavy wooden casks lie on their sides in a dark chamber. Doubtless they are filled with wine. My thirst roars to life. I cannot remember the last time my parched throat had relief. I scramble to the first cask and pull frantically at the cork. The theft of a few cups means nothing, I tell myself. The casks will be ruined by the floods regardless. Finally, the cork surrenders to my attack, and thus red liquid bursts forth from the hole. This is no wine, it is blood still warm from the body. Whether animal or something else, I cannot say. The foul liquid soon mixes with the rising flood waters, creating a warmth that laps against my thighs. By all the gods, are the rest of these casks filled with blood as well? I lack the courage to confirm my suspicion. Disgust quickly becomes fear as I turn to flee, but my weakened legs betray me, sending me toppling over the red ocean below. The smell of death is everywhere. It threatens to consume me. I must escape this hell. Crawling on all fours like an animal, holding back screams lest any foulness enter my mouth, I lurch forward through the red waters and out of the room to freedom. I squint down the dim corridors and proceed east. 
Um, uh, let's try north. The waters rise to my waist, exhausting me both physically and spiritually. I, I pray that this is the way out. Oh, I've been to this one. Oh, no. Shit. Yeah. Uh, east. I find myself in a great hall with only the sounds of rain for comfort. The waterlogged red carpet squishes beneath my feet as I approach the center of the room. Once there, I behold a beautiful dining table upon which rests china and silver of the finest construction, as well as the remains of a fantastic feast. I feel like this is another dead end. As my eyes continue to adjust, I see many chairs surrounding the table, each holding a dinner guest. Noticing movement, I approach the chair at the table's head, but as the truth of the matter dawns on me, I recoil in horror. The host of the feast is a corpse, as are all the invited guests. An army of foul, wriggling insects have made homes in the remains, and this is the moment I saw. This once splendid feast was now nothing more than a requiem for the damned. I take a moment to steady my shaking hands, then slowly back away from the table. Desperate to lose sight of the abomination before me, my gaze lands on the chairs upon which the dead were seated. This is a mistake, for the chairs prove to be even more terrible than the feast itself. Each one is covered in a layer of spikes that runs from the seat up the back and down the arms. This explains the color of the carpet beneath my feet. I can only pray that the unfortunate diners were dead upon the meal began. For if not, it is a simple task to envision the agonized screams that must have sprung forth from their mouths. My mind grasps frantically at the possibility that these souls had committed some terrible crime for which this was punishment. Though in truth, I suspect they had committed no such crime at all. There would be no tomorrow for these unfortunates. This was their last supper. Uh, let's try north. The water has risen to my chin, and now laps greedily at my mouth and nose. You dumb best! Oh. Okay, I'm dead. Let's try again. Uh, I wish there was some kind of clue. And it's hard to understand what directions it means because, like, I don't know. I guess the I guess maybe the coordinates are absolute, and I'm not. I'm thinking too much like. This person must. It would have. Yes. Can't sit. Perhaps you should spend. Yeah. You maybe I'm just stupid. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Keep going. Go. Okay, north. Okay. Then we proceed east because we came from... North. Let's try south. No, wait, wait. We head north. And when we went east, we had another option. Okay, this is the dining table. West? Ah, oh, god damn it. Or did it happen because I did too? Against. Okay. So I was in the right direction, I just didn't do enough steps. Against all hope, we make it to the front door. Break it down, someone cries, and so I give myself to the effort. In tandem with Axel and Grimoire Vice, 
I slam my body against the thick, sturdy door. On the third try, it gives way, and we find ourselves sprawled on the ground outside the castle. The storm is in retreat. The clouds above are still dark and foreboding, but to the west I can see a thin shimmer of sunlight trying to break through. How can I thank you, I cry as tears join the rain on my cheeks. I would surely have died in there. Looking down, I suddenly notice that my dress is in tatters and sheepishly try to cover my exposed skin. Your dress? asks Vice. Then you are woman, madame? I am. I proffer the two a smile. I suppose that comes as something of surprise, seeing as how I exist only in the form of words. I can see that the one known as Axel Lycan is disappointed that the torn dress will be given no further description, but he hides it well. With a nod and a shrug, the three of us set forth to our awakening. What? But behind us, an awakening of another is kind. Another than a kind is taking place. Black smoke fills the abandoned castle, providing the countless damned souls inside with their final shroud. After a moment, the castle's windows shatter with a mighty roar. A fresh breeze blows through the hallways and corridors, clearing the smoke away for good. As we watch in awe, uncountable black shadows slowly flicker to life, crossing to and fro in front of the broken windows. The castle's dead have awakened to their new life as shades. Do you have anything to say about that? Uh, hopefully there will be no labyrinth next time. I hear that. Thank you so much for saving me. I never want to have a dream like that again. Let's save. Like you would be into all this word stuff, Vice. Even I have my exceptions. Now let's be off. A colony of massive sculptures was visible in the distance, their tall forms scraping against the sky. Vice and Axelikan had never seen such a sight, and their eyes widened as they tried to take it in. Those buildings must be huge if we can see them from this far away. What do you think, Vice? As Vice considered his answer, the sun beat down on them with renewed ferocity. Perhaps they are some manner of mirage, he said. Under this heat, a mirage or two would hardly be an unexpected sight. Axel and Plyka nodded and wiped away the sweat of his brow, leaving a trail of sand in its place. He thought he'd never been so thirsty. The ancient road on which they walked was black and cracked with age. Here and there, thin wisps of grass pushed up through the rocky surface, as if defying those who had laid this material down over their home. The heat reflecting from the road made Axel Lycan lightheaded. His feet hurting, he crouched down to rest. I don't know how much longer I can do this. Is someone playing a joke on us or what? The complaining had already begun. Vice tried not to let his eyes roll too much. A joke, he said? No, no joke. This road leads to the city of art. Excuse me? Perhaps the path itself is simply some manner of grand artistic work. You don't sound very sure of yourself there. Perhaps not, but thinking of it in this way might make it easier for you to bear. Axel, I can glanced at Vice's grinning face, shook his head, and resumed walking. As time passed, Axel's feet grew more painful and his throat drier than, than he thought possible. He tried not to look further than the next step ahead, because the bright sunlight made him hesitant to trust his own senses. We're definitely getting closer, said Vice in an effort to cheer his companion. Yes, this much is certain. Encouraged, Axel lifted his gaze. Suddenly, he stopped walking, choosing instead to stand in the middle of the road with his mouth and eyes wide open and his finger pointing in the distance. Water, he cried. It's water. Water, cried, asked what Bryce. Preposterous. I don't see any water. Look over there, just ahead of us. Look, the sun is reflecting off it. 
Ah, uh, it's gonna be a mirage. Without waiting for response, Axel sprang to life and bounded towards the site. What in the... There was no water. There was nothing but sand in every direction. Axel closed his eyes and sighed as Vice floated up behind him and chuckled softly. I believe this is known as a mirage, he said. Many a desert traveler has spoken of such things. Axel Lycan shook his head, bewildered. Suddenly he pointed off in the distance, his eyes wise much more. Wait, there it is. I just missed it. Look, it's right there. Ah. Uh, sprinted to follow. After a few minutes of running, he came to a halt. He could have sworn it was right around here. Confused, he put his hands to his eyes and rubbed them vigorously. As soon as he stopped to notice a blue, shimmering pool of clear water just over the next rise, with a shout, he bounded off in search of it. The chase continued for nearly an hour until an exasperated vice finally floated up to him and struck him in the face with his cover. Enough, you blithering idiot. Stop this at once. There is no water here. Axel's face clouded. There isn't? There is not, and perhaps next time you will listen to me when I tell you as much. Vice paused for a moment, then continued speaking in a slightly kinder tone. However, I suppose this mad chase was not altogether wasted. It seems we have arrived in the city of art. He looked up. Stretched out before him was a row of impossibly tall sculptures. Their journey was at an end. They're huge. Completely forgetting the heat and pain of the last few hours. I've never seen anything so big. Each sculpture was formed from roughly the same shape, a tall rectangle that stretched up toward the sky. But that is where the similarities ended. Most were covered with panes of glass that reflected light in a thousand directions, while others seemed to be nothing but frames of steel. Okay, he's in the city. Some tall had some had tall spires on their tops, while others possessed triangular caps. What kind of city is this? said Axel. Where are the people? Where are the houses? They're all dead. Perhaps this Perhaps the land is intended exclusively for artistic use. The debate continued as they made their way through the city. Miracles of artistry were everywhere. Great iron crates with wheels sat silent on steel rails. Beautifully carved works with lights of red, amber, and green dangled over every street. Yeah, art. As they moved away from the massive sculptures, they found a great array of smaller ones. Some were covered in glass or brick, but many were composed of materials they'd never before encountered. The sheer variety of colors and styles was staggering. Unable to find a theme or purpose to the abstract works around them, Axel and Weiss eventually fell silent. On the outskirts of the city, they discovered three sculptures in the shape of humans. He uttered a sigh of relief as he approached them. Finally, I was getting tired of modern art. How does he know what that means? The three statues were indistinguishable except for a single word of chiseled into their right arms. One read Alpha, one read Beta, and the final one read Gamma. Those are different types of waves. As Alpha like as Axel like and moved to the touch of the nearest statue, a bird flew from the top of one of the sculptures. Alighting on the statue's shoulder, it emitted a brief, beautiful song that took the form of, of words. Only one form is real, the others are false. The real form will always speak the truth. The false ones will only speak lies. With that, the bird departed. As if on cue, the three statues shuddered, shuddered to life, acquiring color and form as they began to breathe. Hey, look at that, he said. They're alive. The triplets bowed before him. Please, said Alpha, you have to get me out of this nightmare. I am real. Stop lying, said Beta. He turned to hit me and threw his th hands in the air. Alpha's a fake, you know. I'm a real, the real one. What a load of crap, said Gamma. Beta is a fake. Everyone knows I'm the only real one around here. So. Okay, it's one of these puzzles again. Ugh. Okay. You have to get out of me that this nightmare. I am real. So let's go. If that is true, that means the other two have to be lying. So. Stop lying. Alpha's a fake, you know, I'm the real one. So that could still be a lie. Beta is a fake. Well, that means... That means it can't be Alpha, because that would make Gamma a truth teller by saying that Beta is real. So, let's switch this around again. Let's shift the chessboard. So let's say that beta it says alpha's a fake you know I'm the real one so that would make alpha has to be a liar you have to get me out of this nightmare I am real okay 
Now that means that Gamma has to be a liar now too. Beta is a fake. Well, that does not contradict Beta being the truth teller. Everyone knows that I'm the only real one around here. That means that he is also a liar. Therefore, in this case, Beta's claims are not contradicted effectively. Okay. So, let's try this with Gamma, though. Beta's a fake. Everyone knows I'm the only real one around here. Well, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take issue with the phrase "everyone knows," because that therefore he means that the other two. Anyway, Beta's a fake, so that means. Oh, sorry, my head got lost for a second. Beta's a fake, everyone knows I'm the only real one around here. You have to get out of this nightmare, I am real. Uh, if he's a liar, that still doesn't change anything there. Beta, stop lying. Alpha's a fake, I'm the real one. That's the problem, is that means that he is lying about Alpha being a fake. Meaning that, in his case, Alpha would have to be real. So, it means that Beta is the real person. When you consider all the statements, only one of them could be the real thing, said Vice. Max furrowed his eyebrows and considers his answer. Only one of them is real, the others are false. The real form will always speak the truth, the false ones will only speak lies. The real one is Beta. <laughs> Though Axel Lycan's voice betrayed a notable lack of confidence, he was relieved to see Vice nodding at him. If Alpha were telling the truth, Vice be began Vice in the dry tones of a lecturer, Beta and Gamma would be fakes. But in that case, Gamma's claim that Beta is fake would be the truth, even though Gamma is a liar. Therefore, that theory crumbles. Now let us presume. Oh, he's doing <laughs> he's doing the same thing I'm doing. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Okay, so I'll just I'll I'll I'll, I'll do the okay. I'll I'll be proper. Sorry. Now let us presume that Gamma spoke the truth. That makes Alpha and Beta liars. In this situation, however, Beta is calling Alpha a liar, which would leave us with the two statues telling the truth. Finally, let us assume that Beta is telling the truth. If so, Alpha and Gamma's lies would make sense, therefore, Beta must be real. As Vice finished his explanation, Alpha and Gamma crumbled soundlessly into dust, while Beta sprang to life once more. Congratulations, villagers, said Vice in a cheerful voice. The time to awaken has arrived. Thank you for saving me, cried the villager. He dropped to his knees and bowed his head as low as it could go before an uncomfortable Axel pulled him to his feet. Why did you have a dream like this? asked Vice. Have you been to this city before? The villager slowly looked around at the bizarre objects and sculptures that dotted the landscape, then shook his head. I, I don't think so. I mean, it's impossible, right? There's no way I could have ever been to a place like this. But at the same time, I feel like I've seen it before. Deja vu, muttered Axel Lycan, just like the mayor. The vague sense of unease that struck Axel Lycan during the mayor's dream spread once more through his mind. That was rough. I am positive I have seen that place before. Okay, that's enough. Don't need you getting all weird on me too. I mean, we saw that in the prologue. Okay, there. Now all the villagers can wake up, right? Yes, if the mayor's assumption was correct. I think I have had enough wordplay to last a lifetime. Thank you very much. You're telling me. Anyway, let's go see the mayor. I thought I was a goner there. Thanks for the help. What a strange dream. It almost felt familiar somehow. I mean, you are wearing glasses. 
let's get back to the mayor. Oh, how wonderful. Thank you so much. Here, I have something for you. <gasps> we got a f sword named Faith. Wow, this looks valuable. I can really have it? Of course. It's apparently a weapon of some renown, but we have little use for it. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you again for everything. It would be kind of nice if this place became like a... had a shop or something in it. Maybe I'll have to exit and re-enter, but... Yay! I liked at least the... I liked the third one because I could at least reason my way out of that one. That second one is just... If you go through too many rooms and you kind of... Or you don't understand that the coordinates are not relative to you, but are absolute, then it's a little bit easier to figure out, but you have to die a bunch of times to figure that out. I simply cannot bear another of these infernal conversations. Let us save it for another time. What? Okay. I'm gonna do a quick load and then reload because I want to see if that changes the town and anything. You never know. Just gonna check in on them real quick. Because maybe some of them will have quests for me now. Talking do. Wait, what? Oh, it's you. Can I talk to you for a minute? Oh, this is how they always talk now. Here, over here. These are my neighbors. I was just telling them of the dream I had. You know, the one you rescued me from? They don't believe me. They say I'm making the whole thing up. Who could invent something like that? I remember the darkness. I remember the screams. Listen, you have to back me up here. They think I'm crazy. They need to understand. Tell them how you pulled me out of that cell, and there was water everywhere, and how it was rising so quickly. Part of me was convinced you had rescued me only to let me drown, you know? I don't want to drown. People talk about how it's peaceful, but I think they're lying. And then tell them about the bodies. The bodies. Oh, gods, there were so many of them. There was that room with the beds and the corpses, like pieces of charcoal. I keep thinking about the fire and how hot it must have been. And then I don't want to remember it anymore, so I think about the wine. Only it wasn't wine, it was blood, and it was still warm. Sometimes I can still smell it. I'll be eating a piece of pie or something, and all I can smell is that warm blood mixing with the rising water. It's hard to eat now. When I see a table, I think about that feast and the guests, and how the carpet squished beneath my feet when I walked. I don't know, it's weird. The pictures are maybe the worst. I keep wondering if they knew they were going to die, and how they could sit still knowing that each stroke of the brush is a step closer to death. I think about stuff like that a lot now. Actually, I have a hard time thinking about anything else. I don't sleep much. Sleep is hard. I see such terrible things when I close my eyes. Anyway, I was hoping you could tell my neighbors so they... Huh? Where'd they go? They left a while ago, said Axel Eiken quietly. Doubtless they find your dream a bit... disturbing, said Vice. Perhaps you could find something else to talk about with them, hmm? Such as the weather, or kittens. The villager smiled softly at Axel, but the smile soon faded from her face. As the two of them slowly backed away, they could see tears beginning to fall from the corners of her eyes. Aww. I simply cannot... It's, it's too bad. Let's talk to him. I simply cannot bear... I'm talking to him. 
Oh hey, it's you, the guy who saved me from the crazy city. It's great to talk to you again. You're my hero, you know that? Oh, come on, don't be shy. It's alright. The mayor even said we're going to build you a statue and everything. I hear you've been traveling the world. Good for you. Travel's the key to happiness, you know. Getting out in the world, meeting your fellow humans face to face. It really changes the way you see things. I think change like that will be vital in the new world that's coming. How's that? Me? No, I've never traveled. Never left this village, to tell you the truth. Still, I'd like to get out someday. <clears throat> I think our world is dying. Seriously, think about it. You've got the black scrawl, the shades, the mysterious illnesses, like the death dream. It's like something is trying to give us a warning. In fact, I'm sure this is a warning. We need to change our ways before it's too late. I'd like to help change the world, but I'm just a simple villager. Not like you guys. You're on the front lines of everything, rushing in with swords and magic spells and stuff like that. Hey, I know, maybe we can join forces and change the world together. I mean, with your experience and talent and my... Uh, well, whatever I have. Anyway, I think we could really make a difference. This world needs a leader, someone who can unite the people in common purpose. He'd probably have to be a kind, kind of tough, though, too. I mean, this isn't a world that appreciates calm discussion, you know? He'd also need to be smart and have the ability to look down the road and think about what's best for the future. I bet you'd be perfect. What do you say? Huh? You think I should do it? Oh, no, that's not... I mean... Thanks and everything, but no thanks. I'm not a public limelight kind of guy. I'd rather hang around the background and help from there. You know, like an advisor or a puppet master or whatever they're called. Actually, I think I'd be pretty good at that. <laughs> Axel and Vice left before the villager could hand them a copy of his pamphlet, Ten Simple Ways to Save the World. As they walked, Vice pondered openly about the man. I supposed he is what they call an armchair general. No, fuck off. I want to talk. Ah, oh, hello again. You know, I've been trying to figure out a way to thank you for saving me, and I think I've got it. We're going to put up a statue of you. It'll be ten feet high and made of pure gold. Oh, and I know you don't own a horse, but I think we'll put you on one anyway. Horses just make people look more heroic, you know? I don't think so. How's that? You don't want a statue? Oh, I thought you'd really enjoy it. Regardless, thanks to your tireless efforts, our village is at peace once more. And at peas. Ah, uh, that's a little agricultural joke right there. Anyway, I've been thinking about other things besides bad jokes and statues. I've also decided that we need to start holding the, vi the village festival again. We used to have it every year, but the last mayor thought it was old-fashioned or something and he killed it. But since I'm the mayor, I can start it up again. That's not abusing my power or anything, is it? What's that? You want to hear about the festival? Well, the official name is the Feast of Three Days. We call it that because everyone sits around a huge table oh, and eats for three days straight, no sleeping allowed. Oh, and we hold it on the foggiest days of the year, so it's hard to tell what you're eating. Some of the dishes are delicious, but some are really rare, and well, there's some weird stuff in them, let's leave it at that. Anyway... You'd be pretty surprised what you can eat when you haven't slept for a couple of days. This sounds terrible. I'll make sure that a room is prepared for you, so you can be the guest of on what? You can't come? You have to wash your hair? Oh, alright. Well, I guess that's understandable, what with the adventuring and all. Truthfully, I think this town needs more group bonding activities like that. How about a better one than that? It'll help us get to know each other, and also promote unity in times of crisis and so forth. Vice coughed loudly. How much longer must we bear the insufferable flapping of this fool's gums, he whispered to Axel. Ah, let him talk. He just woke up. He probably has a lot he wants to say. Vice sighed. This must be what Popola meant by bright and talkative. Okay. So. No quests opened up.
Oh, this is different. The death dream certainly is a strange illness. Oh, okay, that was a <clears throat> that was an explanation fade. Yeah, it was something, all right. Even I, with my natural love for words, have no desire to visit that place ever again. You guys did well. You've been making a lot of long trips lately. Are you sure you're not pushing yourself too hard? I'm okay. I can't just sit around all day while Yona's sick, after all. If you say so. So, anything I can do for you? Well, I suppose there is one thing I could use a hand with. Have you heard about our plans to repair the canal? The work probably won't happen for a while. But once it's done, we can use the canal for trade and travel and all kinds of useful things. Unfortunately, however, we're a bit behind schedule at the moment. If you're willing to help out, I'd really appreciate it. No problem. What do you need? Great. So, the man I originally asked to help on this project hasn't shown up for work in a few days. I'm starting to get a little worried. So, maybe you can head over to Seafront and check up on him? I'll mark the location of his house on your map. He always carries a red bag over his shoulder, so he should be easy enough to find. Got it. The person I asked to help... Off we go. A canal, is it? Fascinating. If we had a ferry, we could put these days of endlessly running about behind us. Don't you just float everywhere anyway? Do you think I am borne aloft by the winds, lad? It takes stamina to maintain this height. Oh, really? You could at least try to hide the utter dismay, you know. Well, I think I'm gonna check in with Yona, see if she has a new fetch quest for me. job should I give you first? Oh, brother. This one's rich. Some guy wants to give a gift to a woman, and he needs your help. I wrote down the client's location on your map, so head over there to get the details. Oh, it's that guy. So I guess talking to him enough times cause that quest to trigger with her, so that works. I'll take it. Let's see if he has anything new. Welcome! Thanks Thanks for nothing.
Oh, again? Okay, well. Down it went. Let's see. I'm guessing her phasing right in in front of me is like Kaine for kind of like or, or Tails in Sonic 2. It's it's their translation for I died at some point. I'm back. Sorry, plot, I have subquests to do. We Gastropod Gastropod We got coil. Oh nice. You can get inside facade, right? Sure, but oh, perfect! Listen, there's something there that you have to get for me. My girl wants a new accessory, but it has to be made from this really rare ore that they carry in facade's strange things store. So next time you're there, could you buy some for me? I think it's called fluorite. <laughs> Please. I mean, I guess. Oh, thank you! This is fantastic! Such affection. This man has clearly been entranced by his lover. Seems to me like he's being played. Whatever do you mean? You know, this may be one of those things a magic book just can't understand. Ridiculous. There is nothing beyond my knowledge. <laughs> if you say so. I think Vice could easily understand what that means. He's being played for a fool. It's not that hard a concept. And there's all those kids talking about a ritual. Nope. <clears throat> Seems like his cooking business is doing just fine. Old man, nope, no new quests for me from him.
Okay. No new quests to be found. So let's... Um, hey, uh, are you the guy who's supposed to help repair the canal? Popola sent me to... Oh god, it's over. My life is over. Surely you must realize nothing good can come of being involved with this particular endeavor. Easy, Vice. Hey, so, are you alright? What happened? It's my wife. She left home a week ago and hasn't come back. I'm so worried I can't even focus on my work. Oh, my sweet dumpling, where are you? Mm, if he sounds like this, she's probably ran away. Or eloped. I already want to get away from him. Oh, that's terrible. Would you like us to help you look for her? Really? You do that for me? Sure. Er, but do you have any idea where we should start? Hmm. Well, she always used to enjoy drinking at the tavern with her friends. All right, then I guess we'll start with them. Thank you. This means the world to me. Oh, and by the way, my wife always carries a red bag, just like mine. If you mention that, it might ring some bells. I've met some odd couples in my day, but not the need to wander about flaunting matching luggage. <laughs> you need to get with the times. Coordinated outfits are all the rage. Plus, these bags are special. We bought them for our anniversary. But now my sweet dumpling is gone, <laughs> and it's all my fault. Okay, okay, just stay calm. We'll go look for her, all right? You sit. Oh, what a sad sack. I'm willing to bet that man knows more about his wife absconding than he's letting on. <sighs> oh, suddenly appearing lady. Hey there, I'm, uh, looking for a woman carrying a red bag. Are you now? Interesting. Did something happen to her? She hasn't been home, and her husband's worried. Do you know anything about where she might be? <laughs> Trouble in paradise, is it? Oh, those two never change. Anyway, the short answer is no. She hasn't been around here, either. Though, come to think of it, she always got on well with the woman over at the tackle shop. Maybe you should try her? I'll do that. Thanks. Hey, what's the rush? You've got a cute face. Why not sit here and join me for a round? Or three? I'm obviously underaged, ma'am. Uh, sorry, ma'am, but I'm not old enough to drink. Hey there, do you know a woman with a red bag by any chance? A red bag? Oh, sure. Although now that I think about it, I haven't seen her in a while. Last time she came around, she mentioned something about leaving town. But I figured it was just idle talk. Leaving town, huh? Alright, thanks for your time. If she has truly left this charming hamlet, finding her may prove most difficult indeed. I just hope she hasn't been attacked by shades or anything. <sighs> oh, I've been such an idiot. Please, if you have any information about my wife, anything at all, you gotta tell me, okay? Okay. That's the guard, I guess. He sees all. This town didn't become a trade hub until the world sank into the ocean. Men of the sea have a bad... I'll be... Okay. Try the creepy mansion.
Something about that shade seems rather... Hey, look at this. It is identical to the red satchel carried by the man who sent us on this mad quest. Perhaps it belongs to his spouse. Oh no. Do you think the shades got her? Why do they carry these things though? I think these I think these people get turned into them. I fear it likely, lad. I sense no other activity in the immediate vicinity. We were too late. Well, this is terrible. What are we supposed to say? However difficult it may be, we've no choice but to tell the man the truth. No, let's write a weird letter and have him strung along for the rest of his life and make just a, a, a shell around his life so he can never exit this, this fake world that we have constructed for him because we just can't bear. We don't have the emotional strength to tell him the truth. Yeah, great. That'll be fun. find my sweet dumpling we didn't but we got this off a shade oh no this this is hers so our fears were correct oh god how could this happen to her <laughs> this is all my fault If I may, my good man, why did your wife leave home in the first place? It's because... because I... I think we should give him some time to himself, Vice. Honey, I'm home! Good heavens, you're a wreck! What's wrong? Dumpling! You're not dead! What in the world are you talking about? Oh, oh, you found my bag. Thank you so much. I can't believe I went and dropped it like that. Oh, this is such a relief. Okay, seriously. What's going on? How did she, like, not tell anyone? I see. So, he found a shade with my bag and assumed I'd been attacked and killed? I'm just glad you're safe, Dumpling. But I'm also so sorry. This is all my fault. Oh, if I didn't eat that apple you were saving. Oh, God, I'm such an idiot. Listen, I promise I'll never eat anything of yours again. You just promise never to run away from home again, okay? Run away? Have you lost your mind? I just went to visit my parents. Huh? I told you about this. Going to see my family, gone for a week. <laughs> Remember? Ugh, are you serious right now? Why don't you ever listen to me? Um... None of her friends knew either. Lad, my brilliant intuition suggests we should beat a hasty retreat from these two with all speed. Like, you would expect her to tell her friends about that type of thing too, right? Um... Oh, uh, hey, I have to go pick up a fish from the fish store. I do have another quest. I can't believe you didn't listen to me, and you ate my apple. You are the absolute worst! What?! Oh, like you're some perfect angel! You didn't even care enough about our anniversary to hang on to your bag! God, I would leave him. Just, that's, what a whiny bitch of a guy. You, kid, I'm right about this, yeah? If anyone's wrong here, it's my wife, right? Wait, you're asking me? Well, you shouldn't have eaten your wife's apple. That's not very nice. 
but I was hungry, and it was just sitting there. Look, I'm glad you went looking for my wife and all, but that was low, friend. Low. Uh oh Did I cross a line there? Besides, it's pretty rich to come after me for an apple when you threw away my entire stamp collection. Ha! You're damn right I did. And I'd do it again. You are nothing but a hoarding slob. You there. My husband's in the wrong here, isn't he? Uh, pardon, but madam, I... Oh, enough. The both of you are at fault. Now apologize to one another and end this ridiculous display. Big talk for a floating magazine. I see you finally agree on something. Why do these people know about magazines? even understand how frustrating this is, you colossal oaf. This is exactly what I hate about you. Fine, hate me. I'll still sleep like a baby knowing I'm not an unreasonable hag like you. He sounds like one of the voice actors from Crayon Shinshan, like the the annoying lovering lover couple. It would be really great if they actually used those two for this. Vice, what do I do? You turn on your heel and walk away as fast as your legs can carry you, my good lad. That's it. I have had enough. Instead of belittling me, why don't you get a proper job? Everyone in the neighborhood treats me like dirt, and it's all because of my unemployed slob of a husband. Uh, actually, I have a job now. Wait, you what? I almost kind of wanted... I would have changed that to... Wait, you what? You're kidding. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> That's great. Well, I sort of wanted it to be <laughs> a surprise. Oh, you big silly Billy. Well, this calls for a celebration. Come on, I'm going to bake you a nice apple pie. I like her delivery. She has good line delivery and good choices. I have no idea what just transpired, but it has utterly exhausted me. Well, looks like they made up, so all's well that ends well? In the course of all that madness, I have forgotten why we even came here in the first place. Oh, heck, the canal! We need to ask him about the canal! I can't thank you enough for all your help. Uh, sure, but listen, we need to talk to you about the canal. All right! That's why you came here in the first place, huh? Well, now that my love life is rolling in clover again, I'd be more than happy to get going on the canal work. To dig the canal, canal digger. Heavens, that <clears throat> was exhausting. Tell me about it. Anyway, let's go give Popola an update. Well, I'm glad the game didn't go as grim as I was expecting it to go. Maybe it was just getting tired of leading me to believe everything always ends in the most sad way. Which is nice. I'm glad the game is not into doing that. The couple with the red bags were a strange pair indeed. It boggles the mind to think their relationship <clears throat> will persist despite such intense squabbling. Well, they looked pretty happy in the end, at least. Maybe the secret to living a happy life is sharing your feelings, even when they're sort of mean and weird. If you adopt such a strategy, I may leave for groceries one day and never return. I, should, I would have changed the line to cigarettes. <laughs> but I guess that might have been a little bit too dark.
I would have left for a ga for a, a pack of smokes and never returned. What will he say to his his, his Tijuana Bible child? If the internet is humanity's collective unconscious, I think DeviantArt might be the collective Tijuana Bible. I mean, Tijuana Bible. God, I'm so used to people saying it one way, I keep on fucking up. It's Tijuana. <laughs> Tijuana Bible. Welcome. We've got. Do you now? No, you never do. Thanks for your support. Bye. Now I need to go to that sand place full of sand. Oh, it's everywhere. Oh, stop. Let's see. Hold on. No. Oh, I should have. Mm. Oh, well, there we go. Let's finish that devil up quest. No. Give me something cool. I really need to find more of that titanium alloy though. Wah. Uh, I don't, do I need to water these? Yes, I need to water you, haha. -ha. this oh I mysteriously got a new color one <gasps> hooray look at that that's a different color than usual I want to examine it I'm gonna do nothing because I need it to turn into seeds I see I think I've learned how to do something with this okay Oh wait, that's also another one that's a different color too. Oh sweet, I have succeeded in a couple colors. Okay, I think I have done something correctly. So I will harvest the red. See, that one's not a red one, that's an orange colored one. That's a special one, and I want to have the seeds of those. And to do that, you have to let the flower go. Okay, 
Okay, so I have to let those go to seed. And I'll leave these kind of open until then. Yeah, I think I'll do that. colored fruit often used as decoration during the winter months sweet smelling fruit quite popular amongst older women gourd water containers bell peppers wheat oh where's my where's the flowers I picked oh they're recovery items now aren't they 60% red moon flower recovers 30% 30 and 30. Okay. Well, there's good reason to uh, to cultivate those then, since it allows me to heal more often. Since they will only let me carry so many medicinal herbs, much like the California laws. can only carry so many ounces on me at a time. I normally don't like this type of guitar because it makes me think of this exact type of deserty scenario or blazing afternoon sun. Ugh. It's a good song though, but I hate this type of. kind of almost Tuscan style. Smooth move, Kine! I mean, x lax I mean... Olestra, I mean, Poop Cruise. It's gonna try to make your a fluorite accessory, huh? Hey, do you have any fluorite for sale? Well, we've come this far. Might as well finish the job. Yeah. God, all this effort for this one deluded idiot.
my least favorite dungeon. Oh, is that it? No treasures or anything here. Okay. I was hoping. Okay, that's a save point, not a warp. I was hoping there'd be some treasures or something.
God damn it. Damn it. In sand. Take care before all your health is lost. Damn it. I'm covered in sand. Take care before all your health is lost. I'm covered in sand. Take care I know. Shut up. Is lost. a sparkle.
here's that ore you wanted. Oh, thank you. Now maybe my girl will let me hold her hand. Ooh. Here's the money for the material and a little extra for your time. Holy shit. Huh? Oh, hold on. This is way too much. Are you kidding? That's what fluorite costs you on the open market. I only threw in a few coins for your trouble. It's really that expensive? Hey, I learned my lesson last time. From now on, it's nothing but the best for my girl. The human soul is an unfathomable thing indeed. You got that right. Do you think it possible that this man is being deceived by his lover? Yeah, I do. Then we shall inform him at once. Yeah, probably better if we don't. What's this? Have you finally found someone you are unwilling to aid? No. Look, relationships are messy, and sometimes you can't always understand what's going on between a couple. There is nothing in this world that Grimoire Vice cannot understand. Yeah, yeah. like a shitload of money but nothing to spend it on right now because I can't get any of the materials I actually want for the weapon I really want to actually use Not one of my better performances with that guy, but oh well. <laughs> okay, I was just kind of curious about that one.
make sure you stock up on Come back any Goodness. It sounds like the canal repairman had quite the problem on his hands. I'm glad everything turned out all right. Thank you so much for your help. Don't mention it. I'm looking forward to seeing how the canal turns out. If you need anything else from us, just say the word. Thanks, guys. Hey, wait! Huh? I almost forgot. Yona is looking for you. Huh? She said she needed something from you. Time to go play Big Brother for a bit, huh? I guess so. Thanks, Pobla. How does she know? I mean, because Yona never leaves the house. She never leaves here. It's weird. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being too weird about the gamey elements of this. Eh, <laughs> gamey. Uh, let's go. Let's go check on her sis. said you needed something? Yeah. A favor, actually. What is it? Um... I can't help if you don't tell me, sis. Okay, I'm gonna say... Ready? I'm ready, Yona. I need you to help my friend. Your friend? Yep. I have a friend. And we've been writing each other letters. Seriously? A pen pal? How delightful. So who is this friend? He's kind of... He? It's a guy? Yes. And he's sick and in a whole lot of trouble. And I know that you and Vicey are the only ones who can help him. Vicey? Tell me about this guy. <laughs> he lives in this really big house down south. And he's super nice. And he's my Oh, friend. it's the creepy monochrome house. So you have to help him. Please? Yona, listen. Please? Great. Now what do I do? Fine. I'll see what I can do. Yay! Thank you! Please. Great. Yona's got a boyfriend. And? Is something amiss, lad? Your voice is trembling. No, it isn't. Shut up! Oh. 
All right. Well, with that, I think I'm going to take a quick break. And we'll get on with checking out this mysterious pen pal and the weird monochrome soundless house that he lives in in the next section. <laughs>